All right, so this is um, accrual accounting, and it's kind of uh, one of the more difficult topics, in my opinion. So I wanted to make sure that um, I got you as much information and help as I could with this chapter. So accrual accounting, um, the concept is that you record things when they happen, not necessarily when you get the cash for it. Uh, and there are a couple different reasons. And I'm going to go ahead and explain those as we go through this PowerPoint. So the first one is what's called the matching principle. And this is pretty much the main reason why we do this. So what um, our accounting rules say is that we need to match our revenue with our expenses. So let me give you an example. If you um, earn revenue, let's say in 2014, um, but you incur those expenses related to that revenue in 2015. So let's say that you uh, sold a piece of equipment, um, but you haven't actually paid for that equipment yet. You don't get the bill, so then you pay it the next year. Well, those that expense and that revenue doesn't match in the same time period. And our accounting rules like you to match things in the same time period so that you get a really accurate picture of what's happening in your financial statements. So if you show that you have $10,000 worth of revenue this year, but you don't actually have the expense, it doesn't tell you that maybe you paid $5,000 for that piece of equipment. Well, this year you're going to show $10,000 worth of revenue, which is really inaccurate. It really should be five. And then next year it's going to show $5,000 worth of expenses without showing that revenue. So it's not super accurate, which is why we have to do accrual accounting. So these are some of the things that we're going to talk about. Services provided, and maybe we haven't been paid for them yet. Um, insurance is filed, payment's going to be received in the future. Um, when we, when do we record that? When do we mark down that we have actually earned that money? It's when we've actually provided the service. So today my daughter has a dentist appointment and today is when that dentist is going to record that revenue. I mean, chances are the insurance company is not going to pay for a month, but we want to show that that was earned today. Um, and then the expenses that were used. So let's say they used, I don't know, Novocaine or whatever today, and they haven't paid for it yet. Well, they're going to actually incur that expense today. They're going to incur the expense of the wages paid to the dentist and to the um, dental assistant and to the dental hygienist today, not when they actually pay them. So in this first example, this is kind of small, let's see if I can make it bigger. Um, Family Healthcare PC received $1,800 from ILS company as rent for use of its land. So in this case, we received $1,800. Well, as of today, what have we done for that $1,800? We haven't done anything for it yet. So it goes in as a liability. And the theory behind this is that once, if, look, let me give you an example with football games. Let's say that you... Um, buy season tickets to a football season, um, let's say Atlanta. So you buy um, season tickets for all the Atlanta games. Well, if you buy them today, what would happen if tomorrow, let's say the stadium collapsed and all the games had to be canceled? What would happen? Theoretically, you should get that money back. So we have to record that as a liability because theoretically we haven't earned it yet and if something happened, we'd have to pay that back. Now, what happens if you paid for, let's say, 10 games, you go to the first game and then the Monday after the first game, the stadium collapses and they have to cancel the rest of the games. Well, you'd get your money back for nine of those games, right? So once that one game has happened, then you can go ahead and record that as revenue because you've now earned it. All right, so this is what they're saying is that it's a liability until the revenue is actually earned. Um, what happens when we buy a two-year insurance policy? We paid $2,400 in cash for it. The same concept kind of applies. What happens when you buy insurance today and then tomorrow you decide to cancel? If you're with a good insurance company, they should give you your money back with the exception of that one day. So, 
when we when we have prepaid for something and we haven't used it all up yet, it's still considered an asset, okay, until we use it. Now, if we paid for insurance for 100 days today and then we canceled tomorrow, we'd still get $99, 99 days worth of insurance back. Okay. So this is the same concept. They buy a six-month malpractice insurance policy and pay $6,000 up front. Well, all of that is considered an asset, but then as we use it, use that up, it, it then goes from an asset to an expense. Because if we bought a six-month insurance policy today and then canceled in a month, we'd only get five months worth of money back, right? We only get our $5,000 back. So typically, we make these adjustments like once a month, okay? That's just a rule of thumb. Some companies are different. Um, so what happens here? We invest an additional 5,000 in the business in exchange for, for stock. This isn't a, um, an accrual. This is just, uh, I guess they <laughs> needed more cash. All right. What happens here? So we purchased $240 of supply on account. What on account means is that we haven't paid cash for it yet, but guess what? We're going to owe that later. So this is not an accrual, um, entry, but we are going to have to, um, adjust that at some point because when you buy a supply, let's say you buy 500 paper clips, for example, um, you can return those, right, and get your money back. They're an asset, um, but as you use them, you probably can't return those, right? So at the end of the month, we're going to kind of have to figure out what we've used, and what we've used is no longer an asset, but now becomes an expense because those no longer can be um, sold for cash or um, are considered an asset. All right, so we purchased equipment. Um, and again, this isn't an accrual entry, but we are at some point going to have to make an entry to um, depreciate that item. And we will go over that. Okay. We provided services $6,100 to patients on account. That means that we provided the service, so if, I, if we're a dentist, we've provided $6,100 in dental services to patients, but they haven't paid us yet. We're going to go ahead and record that now because we've earned it, okay? And the only difference is instead of um, increasing our cash, we're going to increase our accounts receivable. And I'm sorry, that's my dog, and that's probably not the last time you're going to hear that because he barks off. Okay. Um, for the next one, um, we performed services, but guess what? They paid us. So not an accrual. We're not going to have any, to make any adjustments later. We just get to increase our revenue woohoo, and increase our cash. All right. We received $4,200 in cash um, from accounts receivable. So we're going to increase our cash and the accounts receivable is no longer there. We're just going to go ahead and decrease our um, accounts receivable. Um, and these are some just general entries, so I'm going to kind of skip over some of these. We don't need to go over all of these because we're talking about mostly accruals today. Okay. Um, we incurred expenses, so even though we haven't paid for certain expenses, um, we've incurred them, and that may be wages. Um, that may be um, something else that you know you're going to have to pay for later. Um, but you just haven't paid it yet. So we've incurred that expense. We're going to owe it. And on the reverse side, if you're an employee um, and you worked last week and you don't get paid until this week, just because you haven't gotten paid doesn't mean you've earned it, right? You want to make sure that you've earned that. So that's why they have to record it. Okay. Um, we have some dividends here. So now we're going to have to go ahead and talk about some of the accrual, um, accrued entries that we're going to have to make. So we paid for that prepaid insurance, right? Um, the insurance, um, we now have used a certain amount of insurance. I guess we have used, how much was it, 1100 that we've used. So if we canceled tomorrow, it was $1,100 that we would not get back. We've already used it. So that's going to have to come out of prepaid. It's no longer prepaid. It's now actual insurance expense. So we're going to lower our prepaid and we're going to uh, lower our equity because we had that expense. Okay. And again, with the supplies, I guess we used $150 worth of supplies. 
we can no longer count that as a supply. It's no longer good. It's done, thrown away or whatever happened to it. So we're going to decrease our supplies and decrease our equity because it's now an expense. Um, now we have depreciation. So I want to talk about a little bit about depreciation. Um, the reason we have depreciation is not because assets decrease in value over time, which they do, like vehicles and, and buildings and things like that, but because, again, we want to match the revenue with the expense. So your asset, your car or your building or your office equipment is working for you year after year after year and helping you um, bring in income year after year after year. So instead of taking the whole expense of that asset the year you buy it, what you're going to do is you're going to spread that expense out over the time that it's helping you bring in income to match the revenue with the expense. So that's why we depreciate. And there are lots of different ways to depreciate, and I think we're just going to talk about straight line depreciation, which is just you take the same amount of depreciation over the life of the asset. So if it's five years, you take this exact same amount of depreciation every year. All right, in this case, it's going to be 160. So um, what we're going to do is we're not going to actually lower our office equipment account. We're going to have a separate account called accumulated depreciation. We're going to um, subtract that, and then we're also going to subtract out um, our equity because it's an expense. Okay. Um, deferred revenue. So th at this point, um, actually, we have now earned $360 worth of that unearned revenue that used to be a liability. So it's going to go from unearned revenue to real revenue, increasing our equity. Um, accrued expenses and wages. Let's talk a little bit about that. I'm kind of running out of time for this one, but that's okay. All right. So we owe somebody $220 worth of wages. They've earned it. We haven't paid them yet because maybe they work and they worked last week, but they only get paid every two weeks. Well, once they've earned it, then we get to um, essentially decrease the equity because it's an expense and it was a payable. So we get to decrease that accounts payable as well. Accrued revenue uh, for patient services. So if we um, have a service that hasn't been paid, then we get to increase our equity with revenue, but we also increase what's called accounts receivable. So if you do a service, you either have, you either get the cash up front and you increase your cash, or if you don't, you increase your accounts receivable. Those are your two options. So here are the summary of transactions that we did through the whole um, month, okay? So what we're going to do at this point, and, and you guys don't necessarily have to do this. Um, I don't think I'm going to require it, but I just want you to kind of understand where it's coming from. Um, once you've done that, the basically the only thing that we did was increase or decrease each account, right? All the accounts we kind of have to keep a um, running total on. So we're going to add up the balance of each account and put that into what's called a trial balance. From there, we can put that into our financial statements. So the first one you have to make is uh, your income statement. So your income statement is just the summary of your income minus your expenses. And if you have more revenue than expenses, then you have net income. If you have more expenses than revenue, then you have a net loss, okay? So the second one is retained earnings, and this is your equity. So it's just a um, running total of what your equity is in the business. And then the last one that we can do is our balance sheet. And this is our assets and our liabilities and our um, ending balance of our equity. Statement of cash flows, we're not going to talk a whole lot about. It's a little bit complicated, um, but it's just what happened with actual cash. Okay, so how much cash went in, how much cash went out, and then there are a couple different categories that we have in our cash. Um, and this is how, this is kind of an important slide. This is how your financial statements are all connected and this is why you need to do your income statement first and then your equity and then your balance sheet. All right, we talked about cash versus accrual. I also have another video on that. I would encourage you to watch that. Um, this is kind of the whole accounting cycle where you record it and then you adjust and then you have your financial statements. So essentially this is the accounting cycle. I encourage you to watch the other videos too. I think it will help you a lot. Thanks.